and gentlemen, on behalf of the Commanding General of First Marine Division, Major General Roger B. Turner, Jr., welcome to the First Marine Division's commemoration ceremony of the 80th anniversary of the World War II Battle of Midway. Welcome distinguished guests, shipmates, friends, family, and all of you gathered here this morning to remember America's fallen Marines and sailors of this historic battle. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the invocation given by Commander Greg Keith, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, and remain standing for the National Anthem. Shall we pray? Dear God, as we bow this morning in prayer, I ask for your blessing upon this ceremony as we celebrate the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. We gather here today, not only to remember a great naval victory, but also to honor the heroes who gave their lives in a battle that would become the turning point of the war in the Pacific. The victory at the Battle of Midway was made possible through the teamwork of U.S. intelligence, shipyard workers, sailors and Marines doing their duty to the fullest extent possible, and brave pilots and air crew flying through enemy gunfire to accomplish their mission. And I pray that as we look back on our history, and think of those sailors and Marines who left families and friends and even gave up their lives to defend the freedom of the United States, that we would be inspired to always do our part and carry on the noble legacy of those who went before us. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good Lord, I'll take who can't read poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In the Navy, we have two traditions that we hold to annually. In October, we observe the Navy's birthday to celebrate its established 
by the Continental Congress in 1775. And then in June, we pause to acknowledge a moment in modern history where our ancestors prove to the nation that its faith and trust in our Navy is worthwhile. At First Marine Division, this annual event rests a little closer to our hearts because we can see behind the curtain, so to speak, and into the history that is not often glorified or understood by most. Yet it is extremely significant to our Navy's successes at Midway. The Battle of Midway is often referred to as the turning point in the Pacific during World War II, where the campaign in the Pacific had a momentum shift and our Navy's defensive posture became insurmountable offensive posture. We, at the 1st Marine Division, also know that not only was history made at this small island, but modern naval warfare itself was changed, and that the strat strategy behind victory at Midway was something more. We, at 1st Marine Division, recognized that while Midway was the turning point in the Pacific, it was also a pivotal point for informational warfare. For cryptologic sailors, Midway is also seen as a moment in history where, again, the Navy proved itself to be both adaptive and cutting edge in how it uses sailors' technical skills and then applies them to the challenges facing our nation and the Navy. To achieve victory at Midway, our cryptologic ancestors demonstrated that they were willing to be both persistent and creative when, con when confronted with a challenge. Today, as we gather and commemorate the significance of the Battle of Midway, and those who served in it, we also celebrate the battle's evolving legacy. Today, we honor the veterans of Midway, and we also honor the significance that Midway plays as a part of our Navy's history. Today, we consider the Battle of Midway's legacy, which was established June 4th through 7th in 1942, when warfighters in the Pacific engaged in battle after having prepared the battle space using the most timely intelligence, calculated the odds, given the enemy's order of battle, and then confidently moved into the fold after having chosen the terms of engagement. Today, in considering Medway's legacy, we consider Medway's namesake, which was commissioned only three years after the battle itself, on September 10, 1945. The USS Medway served as a home for multiple crews through both peace and combat operations, having served in both Vietnam and the 1991 Persian Gulf War. It was only recently in 1992, after nearly 50 years of steaming and having been a home for nearly three generations of sailors, that she was decommissioned. And with us today, as we commemorate the Battle of Midway, we have the next generation of sailors, soldiers, airmen, marines, coast guardsmen, civilians, and family members who can now clearly see before them just how a naval legacy evolves from being a pivotal moment in history to being the inspiring namesake of a warship that deploys to defend freedom and democracy around the world, and to becoming a staple in the Navy's calendar, where history is marked and Navy heritage is reaffirmed for generations. Here and now, we all can see the importance of why this heritage is deliberately passed into the hands of the next generation, who now train for war and must be inspired to find new ways of meeting challenges, of engaging in complex mischief, which may necessitate their participating in either combat or humanitarian operations, either directly, indirectly, or in a critically enabling capacity. As we commemorate Midway, we consider its legacy and its continuing ability to inspire us, and we wonder if, maybe one day, we, ourselves, will serve as a moment or place like Midway. And we, we, and we will serve with enough to advance military history or leave a historical marker that is embodied on the hull of a proud naval ship. We all should wonder if we will ever serve in such an honorable way that it leaves a mark that sears itself into the culture of generations of sailors and their families to come. For now, we have Midway as our marker to serve a strong example of who we are and why we exist, so that well into the future, sailors and marines will continue to stop during June 4th through 7th every year and consider how naval legacies are made and why they are timelessly cherished generation after generation. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of taps and moment of silence to honor those who have gone before us and have given the ultimate sacrifice for freedom and democracy around the world.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor those who have served in the first Marine Division, the division song, Alti Matilda, will now be played. The song originates from Australia, where the division maintained a training base in World War II and prepared for the island campaign. Over the decades, the division's Marines and sailors have marched off to war to this historic tune. We ask that those who have served in the division from World War II to those currently serving in the Blue Diamond today stand to be recognized. After the playing of Walter Matilda, we ask all others to please rise for the playing of Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of Commanding General, First Commander Division, Major General Roger B. Turner,